Nigeria's Monetary Policy Committee begins its rates decision meeting today. Investors wary as Tanzania moves to assert more control over mines. Plus, Iran calls on OPEC to address rising Libya and Nigeria oil output. Hello and welcome to Business Incorporated coming to you live from Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwawu. We get started now with the markets and I'm here in Africa at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The index was trading in the negative at intraday down 0.12 percent. Now investors remain on a wait and see mode as the Monetary Policy Committee begins its two-day rate setting meetings. In South Africa, the markets are closed as the country marks the National Heritage Day holiday. And in Egypt, the index was looking green at intraday up 0.49%. Kenya closed down 0.07% on Friday. In the meantime, the Nigerian Stock Exchange holds its annual meeting today where a new president is expected to emerge after due consultations. Speaking ahead of the meeting on the sideline of the just concluded Honeywell PLC AGM over the weekend, the former president of the exchange, Oba Otudeko, expects a smooth transition as the market braces up for conversion into company guaranteed by shares. Let's see, you know, it's uh, part of those institutions that underpin our capital markets is soundly conceived, soundly constructed, and is working uh, on articles and conventions that are world class and which uh, has be, which have been also guaranteed by the selection of those members who find themselves and the council as well as the commitment of the respective stockbrokers who are major drivers uh, of the stock exchange. I can say this to you that what we have in the Nigerian Stock Exchange is an institution that is world class and is very responsible in terms of its obligations to driving the development of the capital market, which also consequently dovetails into driving development even of the company. So um, I am convinced that the structure is well, 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 well much in, in place. And don't forget also that it's anchoring, anchoring the wealth of the nation in a lot of ways. It is a very, very responsible institution. I have confidence in the fact that it will continue to, not just to endure, but it's also now passing through demutualization. So you, you will see an institution of great reference. It's a competitive business. It's a global business. It's also a business. So that is what we have on our hand. I expect a very smooth annual general meeting. And I expect that we have a sound platform out there to drive our capital market. Judging by the consultations that have taken place, I believe that with the involvement of all, when I say all, who have been consulted, and that includes not just the private, but also the public sector, I have absolute confidence and believe that the outcome is going to be positive. Well, the newly elected president of the Nigerian Stock Exchange will sound the closing gong at the end of trading today. That's by 2.30 p.m. We move on now to the Middle East, where the shares of Abu Dhabi-listed Danagas fell sharply before a London court hearing on its maturing Sukuk issue, while Qatar bucked an otherwise weak regional market. The stock sank 2.7% after 90 minutes of trade, heading to their third straight session of losses as investors awaited the outcome of a London High Court trial on the validity of the $700 million Sukuk. At intraday, the Abu Dhabi index was down 0.67% as most other shares declined. The Dubai index lost 0.86% as 19 shares declined and only three rose. Emma Properties was down 2.1%. Qatar's index, which has been struggling to recover from declines triggered by its diplomatic rift with four Arab states in early June, was up 0.64%. Islamic lender Masraf Al-Rayyan was up 2.2%. 
The Saudi index lost 1.45% as most 14 of the 20 most valuable shares fell. And in Europe, the stocks were marginally higher in early trade as investors digested election results out of Germany, where the Nationalist Alternative for Germany won parliamentary seats for the first time. Well, it's morning after the elections. Let's talk to my colleague, Conrad Busen, all the way in Frankfurt. Good afternoon, Conrad. Good to see you again after a long time. Hi, Jimmy. Glad to be back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, the election. That was the big thing for you guys in Germany over the weekend. The campaign trail was hot and the elections hotly contested. But the outcome looks uh, predictable for the incumbent Chancellor Angela Merkel. Now, what's in the news today in Germany and Europe regarding Sunday's poll? You're right, Jimmy. The part about uh, Angela Merkel happened as predicted. She will continue to be the Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany. She will be, continue to be the head of government in Berlin. But uh, the other parts of the outcome of this election didn't really happen as predicted. A majority of people had foreseen that, you know, there would be another majority for what's called a grand coalition here in Germany, a coalition of Angela Merkel's center-right party, CDU, and the Social Democrats, the Labour Party, SPD. But the SPD lost so much that it says, no, we are not going to form another grand coalition. We are going into opposition now, which means that in order to be able to form a new government, Angela Merkel will have to talk. If she doesn't want to talk to the new right-wing AFD party, she will have to talk to the Liberal Democrats, which is a free market-oriented party, and the Green Party, which has its roots in the uh, environmental movement. They, the three parties, are considered to be the ones to form a new coalition, but as especially the Liberal Democrats and the Greens fought fiercely against each other uh, get, during this election campaign, it's quite likely that it's going to take a significant amount of time until the three parties really get together and be able to form a coalition contract. This uncertainty of this outlook is uh, reflected on the markets today. The German equity index DAX, as you can see right behind me, is rather zigzagging disorientedly uh, to the side. Um, German government bonds are in demand, uh, so safe haven investments, which means that the yield on German government bonds slumped significantly lower. Right, Conrad. Now, what will this latest Merkel's victory and the new government in Berlin mean for the architecture of Europe and uh, currency trade area? Well, more question marks. Uh, this is reflected in the euro-dollar exchange rate, which slumped as well. It fell about one U.S. cent below $1.19, uh, which means market participants are questioning what all this means for the, Euro the European uh, Union and the Eurozone. The Liberal Democrats are the party which was as most uh, opposed against more European integration. The idea of a Eurozone finance minister or of a, uh, you know, own budget for the Eurozone is something that the Liberal Democrats do not like. And this is quite likely going to be one topic of um, strong discussion among the future coalition partners. And, you know, I mentioned shortly the AFD party, the anti-immigration right-wing party that managed to get into the German parliament for the first time. It's not going to make part of this government, but it's quite likely to set a very nationalist tone in this new parliament and that makes it more likely that also the center-right party of Angela Merkel will subtly uh, drift to the right more and that makes it much less likely that stories like uh, further integration of the eurozone uh, will be really high on the agenda. So tell me, what are the views from Germany on what Merkel's fourth term would mean beyond European trade and economic relations, perhaps for Sub-Saharan Africa in particular? Well, despite a potentially more nationalist tone in the German parliament, for Africa, uh, 
this future government can mean uh, more business. Remember how when Angela Merkel took the presidency of the G20 in uh, the last autumn, she put Africa first on the agenda. She made it quite clear that Africa was a continent uh, that's worth uh, taking a look at and that's worth getting involved with. And many business people here in Germany, especially um, in the financial world of Frankfurt and also among policymakers in Berlin, are convinced that we here in Germany shouldn't let the field to the Chinese, which at the moment is the most important trading partner of Africa with a trading volume of about $200 billion. Germany's trading volume with Africa is only about $60 billion. And in terms of sub-Saharan Africa, well, in South Africa, Germany already is the second most important trading partner for the country after China. And in Nigeria, as you might know, trading volume has been a bit shaky in recent years, given that oil is the most important commodity that Nigeria exports to Germany. But people here are quite aware of the Nigerian efforts to uh, uh, make larger and, and, and work on more non-oil related exports and German com companies on the other hand have discovered that Nigeria is not only a country with a larger population but with a growing ec economy with a larger and growing middle class that's why large German companies like Bayer, BASF, Lufthansa, Deutsche Bank, Commerzbank, Siemens all have important subsidiaries in Lagos and are hopefully getting more involved in future. Right, Conrad, I'm sure a lot more events will evolve from this um, election. And it's just the beginning of the week and quite a lot to chew for the week. For instance, Brexit talks begins um, today. I'm sure perhaps tomorrow we'll have time to talk about that. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the day, Conrad.